little bigger. Yep, we are live. Okay. Do the intro. Welcome everybody to Big Fat Dubs and our first cooking stream. So it was something different. We asked around and people said, hey, we know we've been here about all these dishes that you guys do. So let, can we see them? Um, even though we've been posting shorts about them, I said, well, can we see the process? You know, can you tell us about it? So here we are. So today we are making Ron's famous chili and cornbread. So, Ryan, I'm going to go ahead and let you tell them what you're doing here right now. What up, folks? Um, so, we're making, so we we decided to do, um, it's kind of a popular thing that we've done is uh, cooking. Um, and we currently have like four in the run right now of dishes that we'll start with and then we'll move along as we go along as we do better. Um, so, we're going to start with chili. It's kind of a staple here um, and something that I've started making um, in the last few years and a um, couple I you know everyone makes chili differently and it's different ways of making chili um, for me it's not so much that I make chili spicy which is a big thing people like spice and like that our my chili has a little bit of spice to it but I'm gonna show you what I cook with it like that and one of the things that I do with it I implement is I implement a lot of sweetness to it which gives it a nice kick and everything like that I think my <laughs> um, I've kind of laid off. Uh, so um, I'll show you what I have here like that. So I'm gonna start cooking the chili and like that. Kelly's gonna get the going on the cornbread, um, just because it takes a lot. Um, I do everything on one pot, so we do a one pot kind of chili. Um, a big question I get asked when I talk about one pot is people ask me if I do it on the slow cooker. I actually don't. I actually, which is funny because you see this air fryer here. That's mine that I got for Christmas. He uses it more than I do. Um, I do a lot of natural, if like- If you get an air fryer, those things are wonderful. I do a lot of like full cooking, um, more and everything like that. I Very therapeutic. Um, so kind of things that, I'll go over what I kind of use for um, cooking with the chili and everything like that, and then I'm gonna get started on the chopping. Um, the cornbread's pretty easy. It's kind of just your basic box cornbread. Yep. Uh, simple things and everything like that. Um, we're not sponsored by anyone, so don't think when we show brands or anything that we're sponsored. <laughs> um, so uh, one of the things that I do is I don't eat beef anymore. I don't eat red meat anymore. So I've switched it out to more poultry based. Um, I, when I, uh, a couple years ago, I really hit a down low on health and I started um, changing my diet and everything like that. So I started going with more uh, poultry based. So I actually use ground turkey, which, um, I think Kelly actually wasn't really into ground turkey until I started making stuff with it. And um, yeah, pretty much. Um, uh, we did a little bit of ground tur turkey, but we were mostly just always ground beef. We've always been beef because if you know me, I'm, I work with dairy cattle. I yeah. mean, sorry, my family's working with dairy cattle. Yeah, that's fine. Like, but I used to but this is good too. I've been enjoying this too. Uh, Ryan's showing me something different. It is enjoyable. And yeah, it's also been too helping me get ready for me, you know, just pure ground beef. And, and the biggest thing when you substitute stuff like this, it's all in the mindset. It's it's the way you gotta cook it. So as we go along and write that, um, you'll see how I cook things and you'll see how it just kind of turns out. And again, like, yeah, oh, ground beef should have been the meat. Actually, I've made it with ground turkey and I've made it for a lot of people and people love this chili, so. Oh yeah, last time you made this, what, you made eight, seven, eight orders? Seven, eight, I made about eight orders. I just, you went out and bought, yeah, some couple of our containers. Just to give to these people because how badly they like it. Yeah, and I only had one bowl. Yeah, we both each had like a bowl. <laughs> you had two bowls. I gave you the last bowl. Yeah. Um, so a couple other things we do uh, for peppers. I use, like I talked about, I do, I don't make my, I make my chili with a little good of kick, but it's not too spicy. I actually sweeten it out a little bit so it actually kind of complements it. So I use uh, sweet mini bell peppers. I don't use the whole bag. Um, I use... Um, Sweet onions, I uh, use one sweet onion. Usually I use about a half, but I think this one I'm gonna use pretty much all of it because it's, uh, it's actually kind of a smaller onion. Um, obviously just starting to ground turkey. Nice jalapenos for that extra kick. Um, we have your basic stuff, tomato sauce, uh, tomato paste. 
Um, I use canned diced tomatoes, uh, Italian style dice, it's actually a really nice flavor. Um, kind of an ingredient I've used that most people don't see in chili. I use corn, sweet corn. Two cans, I'm only gonna show one, but two cans of chili beans. Uh, and how I cook the meat and everything like that, prep and everything like that is kind of a difference. So sauces wise, I'll be using a little bit of Tabasco sweet and spicy. Um, a little dash of regular Tabasco. Black pepper, kind of a staple that we've been using in this house. <laughs> parsley and cilantro, dried cilantro and dried parsley. I've, I started using cilantro when I, when I was cooking with my tacos. Um, then we started using the dried material and it just adds really nice flavor to it. Yeah, also, it's really good on you know, scrambled eggs too. I just highly suggest yep. it. Um, we're gonna use some beef stock for kind of that nice little, um, little liquid in it. And then we're gonna try something a little different. I'm just gonna add a dash of it to see how it tastes and everything like that. But uh, a little bit of street sauce, street taco sauce. Kelly found this here like that. It's actually really good. We're gonna add a little bit to see how it tastes here like that. Um, and then we have your chili powder and like that. So one of the things that you guys might ask why I'm missing is salt and sodium. I don't use a lot of. Everything has so much sodium in it. It's, yeah. I, I really don't add more. I actually am not a big salt person. So minute, bare minimum or like that uh, is the best thing for me. Um, so that's the ingredients, you guys. Um, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and start chopping. So one of the things that I do is I get everything kind of prepped and then I cook onions, peppers, and the meat together. It sweats it down, it's it's not crunchy, it's a nice small taste and everything like that. So I'm gonna get that started. Kel's gonna get going on the... Uh, got the cornbread going, I already got, just started the oven here, getting it going, cause you know, ovens take a while to get warmed up. Yep. So, and we did wash our hands before, we did wash our hands before this, so if anyone's like, you didn't wash your hands, we did it before. We did it before. Okay. If anybody's ever got any questions, you know, feel free to hit us up, you know, even here during the stream, after the stream, you know, feel free to ask as many questions as you want about this. It's not my recipe. It's not my recipe. Also, uh, if you do hear something in the background, like people talking, we have the TV going on in the background. You got some, what, Guy Ferrari's show going on? Yes, because I'm waiting for SmackDown. Because both of our... Uh, Sports, uh, hockey, cracking, they're, they're done, they won, and then Portland Trail Bridges just got their butts kicked. And we're just waiting for uh, Friday Night Smackdown. They're going to be. So, uh. <coughs> Excuse me. Hey now. Oh, it's split. I feel like there's something like. So also, um, what we're probably gonna do too is um, probably do Ryan's. We're gonna do Ryan's tacos as well. Cause that's a staple here. Uh, my goulash, we'll do. I'll probably do my burritos as well. We each got something that we both um, have like a staple here in the house that we like to make. So over time, we'll do something like this when we can. I just got around. I know I made this before. Ooh. Could have made the cheesy sweet cornbread. That would have been fun. All we need is sour cream. Literally, I have everything else but sour cream. Put a little cheese in the cornbread. Still have cheese. Oh yeah, we have cheese. Like I said, it says it requires sour cream. And also, I think we have it too. Uh, cream style corn in that one can that's been in there forever. Right. Yeah, that, I'll try that sometime. Alright. See what I need all here before I begin. So one thing is you guys um, you guys probably you guys can't see obviously because we have the camera and everything like that. One thing I do is I kind of dice up the peppers too small. Like I said I I don't like having peppers be too big. Um, and I, I made that mistake one time having 
like not fully cut peppers. So I, I like to dice them up really small and everything like that. So, again, it complements the taste and everything like that, but it's not overpowering. Uh, sometimes when you get peppers, especially uh, bell peppers, they're really over. That's all you taste in the flavor, and it's not the best. All right, guys, I'm adding the egg here to our. You know what? I think I can actually just put it all in one. All one? Put it all in one. I mean, could I just do it in the pot? Because you, well, you gotta I mean, stir it. You gotta stir it. Well, that's what I'm saying. Stir. You know, what? I'll just do it in here. That way, it doesn't make a big mess. We sprayed the pan that last time. I did. Did you already? I didn't this time. I did not this time. All right. Okay, we have that. So I just add the egg. Uh, next, let's see. I need vegetable oil. Oh, it says you could actually do melted butter instead too. Last time I did butter. I just did a bowl and put like a thing of butter in it, and I just um put it in the microwave so it melted. Yeah. And then I just put it in. Wanna do that? Yeah. That's what gave it that was what was a really nice flavor like taste you tasted last time with that with that cornbread. I think it was the butter. The butter. You know I wish I had though? Honey still. Add a little oh, bit of honey uh, to that flavor. Yeah, I don't Right, and two. Check. That's a lot of milk. Shit. I'm like, nice I'm like damn, I'm like damn, two thirds, and I'm like, really? Am I reading that right? He says a lot of milk, but here's the problem when you come to me. There ain't no nothing like too much milk. I know this is a guy coming in rich from the dairy. You know? Well, you don't drink as much milk as I do. I mean, I go through about a gallon. I go through a gallon a month, but uh, I go through a gallon in a week. Yeah, exactly. Different strokes for different folks. We'll put it that way. Right, butter. Dice peppers, dice up onions. Measure one third of a melted butter. Oh, yeah. I'm melting butter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if we have any bowl. Yeah, okay. I don't have to use one of the glass bowls because I, I, I use the last one to make it. By the way, guys, this is a small kitchen that we're working in, too. So if you see us moving around a lot, it's because of that. Also, please don't tag Gordon Ramsay in this shit. I don't need him to critique my cooking. All right. What the fuck is that shit? Why is it so raw? Actually, if you do, you do. If you do, you do. I guess we can talk about other topics while we're cooking so it doesn't seem like a completely bland yeah, stream. Exactly. Talk about whatever. Yeah. Bring it up. Uh -oh. So, let's see here. Um, Mayor Spring Training. What do you think? Have you been paying attention so far? Uh, I never pay attention to Spring Training. The only reason is, is, not, is, is again, like... The starters don't play as much in spring training. Mm -hmm. They focus on a lot of the guys that are going to play in the double-A, triple-A, you know, circuit and everything like that. We're not doing too good. I mean, we're doing about how Mayor's always doing spring training. We always...
Oh, it's right. That's good. I say it should be microwaved. Microwave save. Okay. So I put I put oil in the paint in the pot. So I'm gonna let that start up while I uh, get the meat out. Right on. If you're a little bit over, that's fine. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're hoping that when we get a new place, it has a bigger kitchen. Uh, by the way, if you haven't yet, and I won't make any spoilers, new episode of Mandalorian. Great. Um, I guess like a little bit of a spoiler, it's just, it's going to ca catch you up. Uh, up to speed of what happened at the end of the last episode. And then introduce you to what is actually going to happen for the rest of the season. So one thing that I so actually really I'm gonna use a quote from uh, one of our favorite tag teams, the Usos. So a lot of people like talk about measurements when it comes to cooking. For me though, I don't ever use measurements unless it's like something like this, like the cornbread. For the meat and everything like that, I do it by taste. So um, I'm Pacific Islander, um, as the Usos are also Samoan, and he brought up a good quote that my grandmother uses and that I've used as well. Is I don't measure this anything by like actual measurements. If you taste it and it tastes good, that's how you know it's good. You know, you gotta you gotta just taste it. You gotta know. So I have the meat going in the, in the pot right now. As you guys see, I also have uh, onions, all the peppers. I'm gonna add this to the pot. I'm just missing mixing the last of the cornbread right now. Uh, the oven I think just went off, saying that it's ready. See when I when I'm like first doing something, I'll do measurements just so, you know that way I, you know I get the idea of what it's supposed to be like. Then after that, I start making my tweak. Like the last time, like this last time that I just made uh, these mozzarella sticks, it's like. Okay, is, you know, do this, this, uh, but you know, next time it's like, okay, I'm actually gonna do this and this, see what happens. All right, got some cooking going on. We got some cooking going on. Spray down the pan so the cornbread doesn't stick. By the way, butter. Um, some other things like I've done, it's, it's funny, it's like all my stuff has actually been like almost pizza based. Whoa. The uh, secret ingredient I use for, um, before, don't let me to cut you off. The secret ingredient I use to actually um, cook meat really well Parmesan cheese. It's a Parmesan, man. Kelly can say this. It actually adds a nice flavor when you cook it with the meats. Parmesan is also another one, yeah, that we use quite a bit as well, like, like you said with the cilantro. Alright, I'm now pouring the cornbread mix into the saucepan. It's funny, that actually already smells good. <laughs> That's how you do it in this household. When the king is cooking, it smells delicious. Yeah, go and get that in. 
make sure you set the timer too. So I was being a little careful because I sprayed the butter and it kind of got over what? on the side, so I had to watch it. Uh, we need to pour it in for... Depending on what size the pan is, it says anywhere... I guess... 20, 30 minutes? Let me see that. We're not doing muffins, so it's going to be a shorter time. Yeah. So... Let's put 30 minutes. We'll check on it. I like at the 25 mark. All right, got the cornbread in the oven. You start opening up all the cans, draining the liquid out of the corn. You guys didn't hear them. Uh, we're going to actually start opening up the rest of the cans here. And for Ryan to start adding them to the dish. But also, it doesn't matter what order we put these in. You have a small kitchen, we don't have the counter space for it. So I actually gotta do the old hand crank. Uh, it's just the corn you want the juice drained out of, right? Yeah, corn's the only one that gets the juice drained. Oh shit. I need the jalapenos. I forgot to I gotta sweat those down. Can you open that up for me? I'm draining the juice out of the corn. I don't know very many people that ever put the juice that's in like the corn or any vegetable stuff that's drenched in it and with it. I mean, most people I know always drain it out. Yeah, I think it's because it's... I mean, because most of it, it's just the preservative anyways. Yeah, I mean, it's not a bad flavor, but it's not one you really want to have in your dishes. Mexican, I swear. I'm making Ryan make his tacos. I'll make my tacos. I'll make burritos. I'm gonna go get some carne asada with some homemade tortillas. Oh, I don't know how much our bodies will love us, but well, this is an indication our body doesn't love us that much after I cook these tacos or I cook this chili. Yeah, literally last time we had this chili, it was, don't get me wrong, it was amazing. It was great, like, as always. But literally, our bodies went through a cleansing. Okay? I literally felt like the next day my body felt cleansed. And I was like, shit, this feels nice. How's the smell, Cal? Smelling good, bro, man. So what 
I'm doing, so what I did everyone is I sweat down the onions and peppers, like I said. The key thing about doing that is that it actually, it gives, it makes that flavor go into the meat. And then what it does is that it also, you know, doesn't make, it soothes out those stuff so it's not crunchy. Could have just waited until after I cooked. I was just something to do. <laughs> We'll do it in a second. You're done with the right? Yeah. All right. Turn to smell really good. We are five minutes into the cornbread. I guess for next time, yeah, we'll have to remember to uh, start that sooner. Because the chili actually does not take long to put all together. After you get all the ingredients, like the cans opening and the chopping done. For me, it's always when it gets to the chili, I like my chili nice and nice and hot. As I always tell Ryan, like when we do our taste testing, it's like, all right. Just need to warm this bad boy up and I'm ready to go. You've said that. I say we slow cook it for a little bit. I always say we cook, we yeah, simmer, simmer it. simmer it for a bit, but I'm just like, fire that shit up, let's go. The difference. You let it simmer, you let it put on a low heat, you simmer it. If you put it on high, the problem is that you have a, t a tendency to burn the onions on the bottom. You slow cook it, then it makes it a lot better. Like I said, I'm saying the same in temperature, not like overall like hot like spicy. I know, but you're impatient too. You want hot right now. I'm right telling there. them. It's because I want that chili right now. I want it yeah, in my I got stomach. I got spoiling right there. I got the measuring cup. Let's go. Let's go. I come from the people that use these on a daily basis, okay? <laughs> you use those to drink. Hey, right, good pictures. Substitute pictures. Um, we've also done some chicken strips a couple times. Ryan did chicken strips one time, really good. Um, I tried it one time here with the air fryer where I, if you guys saw, uh, I did a couple shorts there on our channel or uh, in the air fryer. I tried it in the air fryer. They turned out all right. Uh, definitely ones that you, know, you have to eat like as soon as you... Uh, as soon as they come out, you can't let them sit for too long because they just got hard. Those are all good. Alright, Ryan's adding the last of the ingredients here from the cans. I know, I feel like we need a, a second camera and like, put it like, over the stove. Yeah, I thought about that. All they're saying is just that my ass is in the way. Right. <laughs> Says big fat dog, we're getting the big fat ass. <laughs> yeah, look at that ass. Yeah, that's dumb. <laughs> Alright. Chili powder. Going in next. Uh, uh, let's see. I know Ryan, Ryan does some pasta dishes, he does uh, his spaghetti, um, fettuccine. A, he does his fettuccine as well. Um, we've, been a really, we've been experimenting quite a bit, actually, um, just from stuff we've been finding or dishes that we have made, we like to add on to it, change it up a bit. Like I said, I know we've done tacos, we've done with ground beef, we've done with chicken. I really like to actually do a pork tacos one day. That'd be really good. Uh, tomorrow, this weekend, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try a little family dish. Um, lumpia, so if no one knows what that is, it's a Pacific Island dish. Very similar to egg roll, but it's pork inside. My grandmother made it all the time as we were kids. It's absolutely delicious. Just takes a long time to cook. I've never had it, um, even though I'm not much of an egg roll person, anyways. But I'm willing to give it a shot. I'm willing to try it. 
if I let you. That's just delicacy, okay? That's currency. That's currency. <laughs> that's currency in my family. <laughs> that's how you get to the head of the table. <laughs> yeah, if you can learn to cook that, you are the head of the table. <laughs> um, one dish that, um, if you guys uh, ever go to KFC, you know they're famous bowls. You know, the mashed potatoes, chicken with corn and gravy and cheese. I've actually started doing my own at-home one of that, which I've been doing. And I've been actually using popcorn chicken. Um, I love to do, actually, we used to do this back when I was living with my parents. We actually used to mash our own potatoes. So, but I've just been using the instant mashed potatoes for it, which still is good. And like I said, just pretty much it's a famous bowl, but homemade. It actually turns out really, really good a lot. Very filling, very filling. Excuse me. Um, I made teriyaki chicken drumstick, or drumsticks, and um, yeah, that's right. He did that one time. That was great. And then golden rusted potatoes roasted. So sometimes when I do uh, pork chops, um, I'll do it a couple different ways. Uh, straight up, I'll just. Uh, uh, I'll just season it with some garlic salt and cook it for a little bit in the air fryer. And then about when it's almost done, I'll put some barbecue sauce on it, usually uh, sweet honey barbecue sauce. Let that cook into it. It comes out really good, nice and juicy. Uh, some other times that I've actually done is taking some pork chops, putting them in a uh, container, and I will actually pour uh, root beer in it and have it soak up overnight. And let that juice up and then do the same thing, air fry it, and so it has all that juice in there. Totally empty this out before we did this. Okay folks, um it's gonna be it for a while for the for the chili. As you see I put everything in the chili now. And so it's it's tastes good right now, but like I said, it's gotta it's gotta simmer, it's gotta slow cook. That's when all the juices and all the flavors kind of mix in and everything like that. So we'll be on the cooker for a little while. Um, probably not gonna have the stream on for the entire time. Um, we'll send out videos and everything like that, um, unless you want to be on the stream. I know, this is the part where I was like thinking, like too bad we didn't have like, I could hook up some game or something for us to actually play on here. Yeah. Um, Why like we waited for a little bit. Yeah. Um, I guess. Give him a shot. Yeah, give him a little shot real quick. That's a little work right there. Like I said, though, we let it cook for a while. Um, stir it every now and then. Always do a taste test. Always. You know. I do it with the tortilla chips. Mm hmm. I broke my yeah, mine broke too. For you guys to take a look at. But yeah, as you can see, right there. Mm. It's already got a little uh, heat coming off of it too. Mm. So, I think we'll end the stream right here because obviously it's going to cook for a little while and then we'll, you know, we have the cornbread still cooking and really bad. So that is Ryan's chili and cornbread. Uh, if you guys ever want to know how to cook it, and everything like that, hit us up and I can send out everything that you're going to need. Um, definitely test your own ways though. Um, find, you know, my whole thing is I look at what people do for recipes and I kind of make them my own. Like I said, it's just all about your unique taste and everything like that. Um, and thanks you guys for tuning in. Get in the picture good. a little bit. Get in the good. picture. I'm good. No, I'll good. watch you in the picture. Um, we'll see what we can get, get done this weekend, guys. But yeah, we're gonna have more brackets coming out. Um, hopefully, get a Mario Monday in here too, here for next week. So stay tuned for that. If you have any ideas uh, for what you want to see for like Mario Monday, uh, which game? Um, that's not how we. I think we pretty much have quite a bit of those, and also for brackets as well. Let us know what you like to see for brackets. Um, I've been. I like. A, I've said in the previous video. I found a way to actually make the bracket so we can actually have everything in the bracket that we need instead of 
some really dumb stuff or stuff we don't even know about. So, yeah, we got to figure out what we want to do for that. Need to figure out what we want to uh, go forward with, and I'll we'll make it up, and we'll do it. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, you guys have a good rest of the night. Y'all safe, you know, and uh, for if anywhere is that snow, there's a little bit of snow in some other places, stay warm. And Kelly, you're out, you got the outro. Yeah, yeah, like LA right now. They don't have a drought. They're not in a drought. <laughs> yeah. Also, if you yeah, get a right. chance, go to a comedy show. Go see Mr. Gabriel Fluffy Iglesias, please. Glacius. I know. I fucking Glacius. Can't. I know. Glacius. I went, Glacius. I went full of stutter there. Glacius there. <laughs> Gabriel Iglesias, guys. Uh, went and saw hey, him. Guys, it was amazing. My name is... You know, I can't remember the kid's name from Benchwarmers. It's the answer I thought of. All right, guys. Um, Kelly with the outro, as always. A comment, a homie. Send them home to mommy. Thank you guys all very much. Catch you later. See ya.